Saving Social Security? What's going on guys? Brandon Gentili here. We have a quick thought experiment for you. Is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, truly insanity? Is it? If it is, then why do we keep doing Social Security? We're going to dive into that today to see exactly what is going on and a, a true path out. Nothing is guaranteed in life, but a true path out potentially for a failing system that we know is failing guaranteed. So we must do something different. Let's dive into this. Currently, there is, we will say, around $3 trillion in the Social Security Fund, rounding up a bit, as you can see here from the Social Security Administration themselves, showing us the uh, the, the trust the, and the assets that are in the trust currently. We know that it is slated to go insolvent in the next decade. I don't think that this is something that is a surprise to many people. Here's CNBC. Social Security isn't bankrupt. What we know about future benefits based on the latest trustees report. And then it goes into telling us how it is bankrupt. <laughs> so this was just done just in the last year, less than a year ago. Um, and, and we know all the time, again, clown world's going to clown world, right? But we've seen a million articles. I put this in here because it's funny, right? I could have put a thousand articles of saying, hey, Social Security, among other things, Medicare, Medicaid, all they're going to go bankrupt within the next 10 years. We have been seeing this. And people might say, well, yeah, you know what? They'll just print money or print currency. Well, yes, they did. They just bailed out some pension just in the last few years, state pensions, which is the first time ever. Federal government bailing out states. However, we see the cost of what that is. It's higher prices everywhere. And this is just the beginning. So the more we bail out pensions, the more we bail out people's 401ks, Social Security, etc., that means higher and higher costs everywhere. Everywhere you turn, it will be higher and higher costs to pay and a lower standard of living. If we continue printing currency and bailing things out, you must have the forest fire come through to clean things out. We're going to show exactly how we can get around this, though, and possibly have a little bit of our cake and eat it, too. So WTF is going up. This poses two main questions. One, how is it that the people who contribute to the fund now don't have enough to be paid out and retire? How, how is that, government? What are you doing? Where are you putting that currency at? Where are you putting it? And again, we say currency because all fiat currencies are not money. None of them are money. A money must be a store of value, say a gold and silver for thousands of years, or now it's Bitcoin. Currencies are fiat. They're just by dictate, by saying government saying it has value. There's pieces of paper. And number two, how are we going to fix this problem? Those are really the true two, two questions that no one seemingly asks. Everyone kicks the can down the road like a bunch of children. For starters, most people believe, like they do about their bank, that the dollars they put in there have been sitting and waiting for them in a little black box decades later for when they retire. By the way, I wrote this as well last year. So I'm doing a new video on this. But I wrote this a year ago. This is before banks started even failing. Now people are starting to learn those lessons. Just like a bank, the Social Security Fund's cash gets lent out or spent on other projects and investments over and over, namely to buy votes. They take away from you and they hand the cash out to other people and buy those votes for lack of a better explanation. I know this is upsetting for people to hear. However, the truth is the only way we can prepare ourselves for a better and brighter future. The simple answer as to why the bank or the social security fund is insolvent or is susceptible to bank runs. They don't have your cash. They spent it. This should make you incredibly angry that the people you entrusted with your retirement took it and blew it. Might be in Ukraine right now. Just saying. Your economic time and energy have been frivolously spent and stolen from you. Banks do the same thing as in the moment you give them a deposit is legally no longer yours and the banks are free to do with it pretty much whatever they wish. We go more into depth of this as to why that is in other blogs. And again, we just did a lot of this recently from the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank blowing up and how this happened. We've been warning about this for years. How do we fix looting though? Again, we try to talk about a lot of the issues and problems we have coming, but we try to always talk about solutions and potential for what we can do to fix these things. Whether it almost always on a personal level, but on a regional, local, or national level as well, or international level. How do we give ourselves an unfair advantage? My proposal, while trying to uproot corruption and fix our system in the meantime, which you've explained again in other blogs, how Bitcoin helps accomplish this is to invest 1% of the Social Security Fund's assets into Bitcoin. And if someone has a greater idea, a better idea, because I, I haven't seen anyone for years come up with any better ideas, then please let us know in the comments. 
at current value, let's run through a thought experiment here. At current, at current state, that would be $3 trillion times 1%, which would equal about $30 billion. Worst case scenario, you lose $30 billion, which they're going to steal from you anyway, probably send over to Ukraine or Taiwan or Afghanistan or somewhere else to pay somebody off. So let's be honest with ourselves. And they're going to print it to recover that because you're going to get your $2,000 a month that you're guaranteed. Don't you worry. But bread's going to be $100 a loaf in five years, in 10 years. So this is what we're in for. If we want that path, then let's keep doing what we're doing. If not, we maybe should do something else here. Worst case scenario, you lose $30 billion, which government can just print up in currency anyway and create more inflation and <laughs> raising the prices of everything, like just like we said. But hey, at least you can still get your Social Security you were planned, like we just talked about. This is their plan to do anyway once it actually goes bankrupt. So let's roll with this. Just like we have written about on the individual level, if you take 1% to 10% of your individual wealth, which we've done this about with 401ks and people's 401k and the amount that people actually, the average 401k and the median 401k, we did this last year as well and showed you what would happen over the next 10 to 20 years if you took a small percentage of your portfolio, 1% to 10%, and put it your 401k into Bitcoin, just like we're doing with the Social Security Trust here. As a hedge for yourself and to potentially double, triple, or quadruple your portfolio in a matter of 10 to 20 years without having to take much risk. Again, 1% to 10%, guys. 1% to 10%. $30 billion divided by $25,000 per Bitcoin. Again, this was written a year ago, even you know, $30,000 now is now, uh, it's would be 1.2 million Bitcoin or say 1 million Bitcoin. Now I'm rounding again, just for numbers sake here, Bitcoin's potential. Here's, here's the crazy part. Here's the chart of where Bitcoin could be in the coming years through looking at network effects and adoption. So this is just one person's network effect chart. They have seen a lot of calls for 500,000 to a million to up to 5 million, somewhere around that in the next 10 years, 2030, 2032. So we'll use an average of, you know, say one or two million here. And you can see that it fits right in with the issuance supply, the supply curve going down, the price curve, the S curve of adoption, et cetera. And it lays it out here nicely. Say Bitcoin went back to all time high 70,000. And again, if you want to, if you want to question that and go into that, you can look at other blog posts and there's many things on the internet about Bitcoin's pricing and why the properties that it has as to why this will happen. This absolutely will happen. And the one guarantee we have that this will happen, the price Fiat dollar price of Bitcoin going to the moon over the coming decades is because we have a guarantee the central banks have to print the fiat currencies into oblivion. So there's no bottom to the fiat currencies, meaning there's no top then, conversely, to Bitcoin. <laughs> That's the guarantee we have, a central bank guarantee, as Mike Money would say. So say Bitcoin went back to an all-time high of 70000 You're looking at $84 billion. $84 billion. Tripling your investment based off of a 1% allocation from the fund, 1%. The averages of many different publications say Social Security would be bankrupt in 10 years. If we look 10 years from now on the chart above, the average is about three and a half to $5 million per coin, if you look out here. However, even if you cut that in half and be extra conserved and say only $2 million per coin, at that rate, $2 million times 1 million Bitcoin, again, today's prices, so it's not quite 1.2, would be about $2 trillion, 2 to 2.4, 2 to, 2 to 2 just depending on price here. So you almost doubled the entire Social Security fund at the very time it is said to go insolvent. Think about that on its current trajectory. Mind you, this is with a 1% allocation initially into Bitcoin's price today. What if we hadn't cut that 10-year projection in half? Or say you put a 10% allocation initially into Bitcoin now, which is you know, prudent investors, smart money investors, they, they, they'll, they'll go one to 10%. So say you put 10%, which again is a very small allocation. If you lose 10%, you still have 90 left. And again, they're going to print, print more of it. It's going to be through inflation, but 10%, what if you do 10%? What do you have to lose? We already know it's trending towards insolvency, right? What do you have to lose? You have the senators who we just wrote about shaming fidelity about offering Bitcoin to its retiree should ironically be doing the very thing they're grandstanding against. Looking at you, Elizabeth Warren, in order to ensure the retirement of Americans and actually lead and serve people, they should be doing everything they can to think outside the box, but they aren't. A 10% initial investment would be 24 trillion, 20 to $24 trillion 10 years from now, literally 8x where the current fund is at, 8xing the social security fund. You think that might help the insolvency problems? Again, that's only with a minimal upfront investment when we know the current thing we are doing will lead to insolvency and bailout. 
which will only lead to more inflation, lowering the standards, living standards of all people. Sometimes easy answer is the simplest answer. Not to mention the freedom technology that the Bitcoin network will give the country and the first mover advantage accruing the wealth before other countries. Remember that Bitcoin first movers will benefit the most. Those that are last into the economic game theory will buy at the highest prices and benefit least. It pays to be decisive and take action. Stay strong. Please let me know your comments below. Again, a simple thought experiment, one to 10% of your portfolio or the social security trust to fix something we know is insolvent. This is such common sense. Mind blowing stuff, guys. I appreciate you coming to my TED talk. Please share this out if you've got something out of this and question everything with boldness, even the existence of God himself. This is not financial advice. It's freedom advice. Question everything. Do your own research. Trust but verify, but do your own research. I appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.